ska music. We don't respect it anymore, okay? People think ska is the least cool thing in the world, and you know what? I've been um, guilty of thinking that myself. And if I'm listening to a ska record and then someone knocks on the door, you better believe I'm pausing that ska record before I answer the door. You know, I don't want these people to open the door and being like, God damn, really, man, less than Jake? Are you really serious with your goddamn Mighty Mighty Boston's right now? I don't like to say that it's a guilty pleasure. I gotta come out here and be upfront with my enjoyment of ska music. I've always liked ska music. I know it's not cool. I know nobody likes ska, but I think that we need to, in 2021, respect ska just a little bit more than we do. Now, you know, ska's come in like three big waves, I guess, and I'm not really here to talk about the history of ska. I'm not a, you know, a punk history channel. If you want punk history, there's this really sick channel. I forget his actual name, but he's the punk historian. And uh, just check him out, man. He has really great videos that cover like the history of punk. What this is, is gonna be me talking about my experience with ska as like a 90s kid, cause it was huge in the 90s. Ska was like fucking in every goddamn big movie that was imaginable. What comes to mind is a uh, basketball and real big fish. Uh, but I know there was a lot more instances of it. There's like every teen movie had a fucking ska band playing a song on the soundtrack or whatever. But I first learned about ska when I was in the fifth grade. You know, I learned about ska through No Doubt. Now I know you're thinking, oh, No Doubt, huh? Uh, Gwen Stefani, aren't they a little punk act? I mean, aren't they a little pop act? You know, yeah, yeah, they are pop as hell because they got really, really big as a ska band in the punk scene. And then, you know, when the majors get a hold of you and the media gets, goes crazy, you know, they're just like, we want Gwen, 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 Gwen. And they got real super pop and that's cool. Gwen's still cool, whatever. Happy for her. But the next band that they introduced me to was one of the bands that they were playing alongside of at the time of them being a ska band in the scene and that was Sublime. Everybody knew Sublime. Sublime, like if you had a friend that played guitar and at one point you sat around any campfire, you know you heard Santeria or like What I Got. You heard some Sublime. They were just one of those bands that were omnipresent, that were just kind of everywhere. And I kind of knew about these two bands before I really even knew what punk or ska or any of those things were because, you know, I was just a kid. I was in grade five just watching television when I learned about these two specific bands. You know, it was before punk rock and marijuana corrupted this brain. But when I first discovered the fact that punk bands were playing ska music was when one of my friends got me into rants and I started listening to every ranted record that was out and it was like around the year 2000, so Rancid 2000 was out, and it was a really hardcore inspired record, but their record right before that, uh, Life Won't Wait, was Ska from beginning to end. And I was like, well, I didn't know what I was hearing because it definitely sounded punk because it was performed by punk performers, but you know, it was different. It was reggae. I was like, why are these punkers playing reggae what's going on here i love it they're singing about reggae reggae on the jukebox and you know i was just like desperate to know what all this meant and what this was it was cool as hell and i learned like in interviews with lars fredrickson of rancid and tim armstrong that you know they got really into reggae as kids because it was it was rebel music in the 70s you know just kind of like against the grain uh, political rebel music and that's just what resonated with their vibe you know and as punk rockers they took that sound and I didn't know it at the time but Tim Armstrong was actually in a little band called Operation Ivy that was the band that is credited for like popularizing the reggae ska sound in the punk community in the underground and how it grew and how fast it grew kind of disgusted them to the point where they were like, we can't do this anymore. And they disbanded uh, like two years, I think, after they put out the record. I think the record came out in 87 and they, you know, they stopped being a band in 89, if I'm remembering that lyric correctly. Uh, so I knew now that Ska was in the punk scene and I wanted to know more. 
And at that time, I was just discovering punk band after punk band after punk band. And I noticed that like a vast majority of them would kind of play around with the ska sound. They wouldn't necessarily be a ska band, but almost every punk band had a ska song. And then there was one point where no effects were just fed up with it. And they put out a song called We Don't Play Ska Anymore. And I don't think they played ska after that. And a band that happened to be on Fat Mike's label of no effects was Propagandi. And they kind of had a song off their big record in 1993 called Ska Sucks. And it was a big middle finger to the ska elite of the scene. And they were just telling everybody that ska sucks, that the sky revival isn't cool. And they called everybody stupid fucks. And it was amazing. But I was like, I love ska. Why are these? I didn't quite get it at the time, you know? But with age comes uh, knowledge and maturity. And I kind of get it now. Um, if you're a, a punk band and you're really, really true to the DIY ethics of punk, like they were in Operation Ivy, playing in a venue like Gilman Street, you know, you're, you're going to be kind of sour when now like pop bands or like adjacent pop bands are kind of taking that because it was rebel music played by rebels and now bands that actually have industry attention are, are, are like kind of taking this from us. You know, because it's like a cultural thing. It was like, it felt like it belonged to them. You know, it was like, we heard reggae and we played it through our shitty amps, through our strung backwards guitars and made it sound like this. And now you're just going to swoop in and, and take our sound. Nah, -uh, said Operation Ivy. We're out of here. But Rancid would go on to form and they wouldn't necessarily be a ska band, but they would put out ska songs and even a full ska record, which I just talked about. And it was like around the late 90s when you were hearing bands like, I don't know, the Aquabats and Goldfinger, Real Big Fish, Less Than Jake, you know, that level kind of pop punk ska band of the late 90s. It was just so popular because of how big pop punk was at the time that it was just in every movie. It was in every show. It was just everywhere. Every scene had a ska band. And we like, we thought it was cool because, you know, they got the band nerds from, from actual school to come in with their trumpets and trombones and do their little ska leads so the people could skank. And that was all fun. But there was like three other hardcore bands, a metalcore band, a screamo band, an emo band, all on that same bill, all listened to and enjoyed by the same people. It's not like one band's crowd would come in and then leave, you know, no, no, no. That wasn't how that went. But... It all died. It just died a vicious death in the early 2000s and just wasn't cool ever again. Like it's like I was saying at the beginning of the stream, uh, it's embarrassing to be listening to ska. If you're listening to ska, if you got some like interrupters on, okay, and then you get a ding dong at the door, say your like postmate shows up and you go downstairs, you want to make sure that you have that ska paused so you don't get like, man, what are you doing up there? <laughs> you got your fucking checkers on? What are you doing, skanking, having a great time? And you're like, oh, no, you can't hear me listening to this. It's kind of embarrassing. But lately, I'm thinking, we need to be respecting Ska. Ska is great. Ska has a great legacy. And yeah, sure, it got super watered down, late 90s, mid 2000s. But then it became super uncool, okay? Now nobody wants to fuck with Ska. So I'm going to fuck with Ska. I'm going to be the guy listening to Ska. And I think it's awesome, okay? And Jeff Rosenstock kind of proved recently that Ska is the shit. Because he put out like a, a pop punk kind of punk record. Uh, last year, year before, I forget when that came out. But it was so rad, man. Those songs were so dope. And the year later, it was like on April Fool's Day, he put out the same record, but this time, all the songs were ska. And I know that sounds like a meme. I know that sounds like a joke. But guess what? The songs were recontextualized to sound different, even though they were the same songs. Like, reggae elements were brought in, ska elements, all that sort of stuff was thrown into the mix to create these new feelings to these songs that I knew and loved already. So I thought, well, holy crap, it's not like he just pressed like ska filter and sent this shit out into the world. It's actually kind of amazing that the songs work in both 
context, you know, as a punk record and as a ska record. And that tells me that it can exist in today's like climate because back in the 90s when shit was getting boring, there was a band called the Voodoo Glow Skulls. I don't know if you know the Voodoo Glow Skulls, but they were one wild ass fucking band if I can tell you anything, okay? And they were a ska band that didn't sound like anything else that I have ever heard. Not like any other ska band I ever heard, but like anything I've ever heard. It was absolutely wild how, how they sounded. And I think if people like brought in that same sort of experimentation with punk rock, with ska, and tried to maybe put in some like hardcore elements and do other things that involve the punk world and the reggae world and the ska world, I think you can come up with a whole lot of really cool ass fucking shit. And I'm not gonna be the one to do it. I'm just gonna be the one out here speaking my mind and saying loudly and proudly that we should respect ska again.